The cybersecurity industry exists because of human laziness, ignorance, incompetence, or perhaps just being tricked. When the son of the deposed king of Nigeria emails you directly asking for help, you help. So I just finished Fancy Barrico's Fitching by Scott J. Shapiro. In this book, he overviews the information age, the dark history of information security starting back in the 1960s all the way up into today. One of the main focal points addressed in this book is why do we even have cybersecurity? And on this channel, I talk about anything cybersecurity related, specifically more so careers and project based. Allow me to overview some of the main reasons why some of us have jobs, others perhaps are looking, and really why the security industry exists today. I do recommend Fancy Bear Goes Fishing. Um, it's a decent book. In this book, Shapiro offers kind of two ideas for the reasons why we have well, security. And it comes down to the ideas of upcode and downcode. So upcode is basically the ways, rules, language, and laws that humans interact with and interpret. So, you know, think about just human to human communication, the laws that keep us within the boundaries, and all of the circumventions that happen upon that. Each of these governs a certain interdependent relationship but ultimately it's the upcode which governs the downcode and how it's formulated and shaped. All of this is to say the reason why we have security is really it's the human level, it's the human communication. And when we look back at the information age and really the spawn and creation of the internet, the first thing that you really will look at is the internet was created without security in mind. When you take a look at network protocols, the technology stacks, operating systems, that were created in the 1960s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, a lot of these weren't really created with the idea of segmentation or security privileges. Individuals, companies, consumers, they were really more interested in seeing if the technology could interconnect, could work, and actually function in a way that would be useful and productive to society. Using internet protocols as a really good staple example of this, if you take a look at any of the old historic ones, HTTP, FTP, DNS, you have a lot of protocols that were created, which did create a facilitation of communication between two computers, for example, but there was never any encryption or security segmentation or least privilege access or password management. There was really none of this bared in mind because it was more about, could we get two devices to connect? Could we make this a productive, useful thing that a consumer would want? Who cares about security? Why would anyone want to, you know, exploit or try to leverage that in a nefarious way. So the internet was never really built with security in mind. And this led to the initial push for features, communications, and really technologies that were going to push out functionality and convenience over security and confidentiality. So the technology and the software residing on top, of course, of hardware, there was a lot of push for features, basically functionality and convenience. And this led to the idea of featureitis. And we see this still a lot today. A good example of featureitis is Microsoft in the 1990s and even up to today in their Microsoft Office suite, as well as in their operating systems. Developers were encouraged to push as many features as possible, as quickly as possible, in order to maybe see if something would reside with consumers and stay atop of consumer trends. What this led to and what this is still leading to today is insecure buggy code. And this has led us to really retroactively looking back and attempting to push patches, changes, and security updates to this buggy code as a means of you know staying on top of security findings. What we saw in the 1990s, 2000s, and what we're seeing today is still this push for features. And basically, it's a means of getting something out as quickly as possible to production. A good example of featureitis and security that's never considered is really AI today. AI and AI agents, LLMs, and AI products, there's this major push for change and iteration and new features. But security ha has not been a major component uh, or thought of in the architecture and design for these AI models and the use cases that lie on top of that. So what we're seeing, of course, is systems, security researchers, bug bounty coming back and saying, yeah, dude, you didn't do this. So the upcode for businesses to push features out has led humans to write 
buggy down code. And of course, that leads me into third reason is the human element. When you take a look at cybersecurity and all the threats that individuals, consumers, companies, and countries face, a lot of it comes down to the human element. In fact, over half of attacks that lead to breaches, you know, uh, data theft, um, really lead to the human element. And that is the third reason. Uh, humans are inherently trusting, they're gullible, um, perhaps they're a bit ignorant, and I'm not saying I'm necessarily above that. In fact, I've fallen for things and the best of us in security have as well. In this book, Shapiro calls it heuristics, basically the human element. And when you take a look at attacks, a lot of them employ very similar tactics, which is a sense of urgency, or it's a sense of loss, perhaps it is reward. When you take a look at a majority of social engineering based attacks, they use these baseline heuristics that play upon the human elements. Nothing, Bobby. We've been waiting here for what? An hour already? Hello, I'm the prince from Nigeria. Really, this leads to, of course, uh, vulnerabilities in humans. So we are inherently maybe a bit more trusting than we can be. And they play into these to, of course, get a means of whatever it is they're trying to accomplish. A good example mentioned in this book is specifically the differentiation between uh, cyber-enabled crime and then actual like cyber attacks. When you take a look at cyber crimes, a majority of threat actors, cyber criminals, are employing social engineering techniques and commodity malware and tools to play upon um, gaining access to information, perhaps stealing money or doing whatever it is that they're trying to accomplish. Mostly it is a financial reward. Whereas when you take a look at cyber-based attacks, they of course still use social engineering as part of their arsenal or tool set, but they also run something that's a bit more down code, basically the technology components of it. So the human element is really the ultimate reason why we have security today. This can all be summarized into three main reasons. Really, you have the security of the internet. It wasn't really built with the idea uh, and principle of security and least privilege. It's the way of consumers and companies always trying to push for features, basically the principle of convenience over security. And of course, you have the human element playing upon human heuristics that really create a sense of urgency, loss, reward, which allow us to or allow cyber criminals and threat actors to play upon human weaknesses in order to get something to their advantage. So the upcode and the downcode, they both have an interdependent relationship. But of course, the upcode dictates how the downcode is interpreted, how it's translated into machines. Right now, machines are still in a state of we need humans to control machines. And so um, up until this point, we have needed ways, laws, regulations, and basically agreed upon principles of things that we can use to, of course, shape security in the future. And a lot of this still isn't being applied today. So is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's more so a thought experiment that I've already kind of explored, which is why we have job security today. So this video is not inherently technical, more of a thought experiment, but it is kind of important to recognize the reasons why security even exists today, why we have the idea of cybersecurity. And if you are interested in learning kind of the context um, history of the information security, I do recommend you can check out this book. I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, and well, yeah, that's basically it for this video. Until the next time, have a good day.